Beach Pill. And welcome to Two Watch Who, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Mark. I'm Sarah. And I'm a Doctor Who fan. And I'm you to watching who? Watching for the very first time. Very first time. Yeah, here we are at the top of the telescope of the Faros Project. That seems a place to be, yeah. <laughs> Looking out over this wonderful view. I need to work out these intros a bit more because... <laughs> I'm going to let you off, it's warm. Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice, actually. Well, a big story this time. Yes, very big story. Wasn't expecting that when I started. I've literally just finished it. I had time for a wee and then jumped on. That was it. <laughs> All right, so we're getting like hot we're getting press like, reactions yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. I did one, two, three, had some jobs to do, four. Um, before we start, just a quick update i did say a couple of episodes ago that file from the daleks was in neighbors right um, a couple of our listeners got in touch and clarified because i was searching for ages trying to find who this who it was um it was i think it was the guy that met susan in the jungle he ended up in neighbors a, a couple of roles in neighbors actually he did go out with helen daniels for a bit so um there we go there there has been a, a few neighbors doctor who crossovers so uh, thank you to everyone who got in touch about that. I think we should, yeah, let's just go straight into the story because I want to know what you think. Yeah, let's just get in it. Okay, so you did you realise it was the last? No, no, no. Um, I didn't even know it was the last in the season at all. The only reason I realised it's last in the season is because on BritBox and it came up season 19, episode one. I wouldn't have even realised it was, well, other than what happens right at the end, I don't think I would have realised it was the last in the season. Because this is obviously quite a, obviously a big story, big change here. I didn't never have this one on video. Do you know what? Tom at school had this on video and I of went course. round his after like school one day and I remember watching it with like chicken nuggets and chips <laughs> around his Love house. That. That. But I never had it. And it was at the point where the videos were, some videos that, came out like really early on were really difficult to find and this one i think i ended up getting all my mum got it for me for like it was like 20 25 pound or something by this point the australian release because oh, wow. you couldn't you could not find it anywhere else and i was like this is like a really big story i need to have this one on video and i remember that and it also reminds me of lemsip because <laughs> I was I was probably quite young. It was when I first had Lemsip. <laughs> so whenever you have a Lemsip and you love a Lemsip, you I do. Love this I do one. because I I must have been ill as a child as usual, yeah. and um, my mum was like, "You have to drink this Lemsip, or you are not getting the Legopolis video." And I was like, "Fine." And I remember <laughs> it being like really, you know, as a child, it tastes oh, horrible, awful. doesn't it? But also. I find with lem slips, when you first take it, it's awful. And then you sort of get so used to it. And that's when they become addictive. I really like them now. Yeah. I don't have any problem. With but whenever I have the first one, of after a long period, you know, you might have them like twice a year, maybe as a period. But after what, the first one is always like, oh. And then after that, I'm like, oh, yeah, fine. You sort of like adapt to it. And that's how the addiction comes in. And it was a lemon one, I remember, because I was like, oh, this is really horrible. And then I think... I I went to blackcurrant for a very long time, but now it's always lemon. Yeah, I can't yeah. do blackcurrant. I've had the blackcurrant too tart. Mm, yeah, yeah. Which is ironic because the lemon's pretty tart, but it's almost a bit sweeter. Anyway, yeah. that's a lot about. But anyway, lemon we've uh, I've not had, I have not had a lemon soup for a long time. I'm probably due <laughs> some. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. It's definitely. I don't think I had any this Christmas this winter. It must have been the one before. It's been a while since I've had a. Lemsip. It used to go through packs and packs. Yeah, both did. Anyway, so that, that reminds me of that. I'll say this. The first episode was draggy for me. Well, there's a lot of talking in the cloister room at the beginning. It's a mix of the cloister room, and then we don't know her name yet, but the the um at that point you don't know her name, the aunt and the... Pi uh, uh, stewardess Tegan yeah but we don't know it at that point that her name's Tegan and I know that Tegan has come back recently 
Oh my gosh, I totally... Yeah, I didn't realise that. That's so, Tegan. Oh my god, I didn't even think that you would remember, I remember that or know that. But at that point, she was just a... Do you know what I mean? She was just a character in it. And then it's not until I think... It's either the end of episode one or the beginning of episode two-ish where she says, Tegan, I think it's when she's... I can't remember how it came out. No, she just says she introduces herself to the Doctor and Adri, doesn't she? Oh, no, when she walks into the TARDIS, she, she pretends to be like, I want to talk to the pilot and presses the yes, button. Yes, that's she, it. Yeah. It's when she goes into the TARDIS. It took me quite some time. Well, okay, so we've got the cloister room. Well, there's a lot of TARDIS. We love a lot of TARDIS. Yeah, a cloister room in the TARDIS. This is something far too serious. But it is a bit of the Doctor sort of walking up and down. And the... Like the staging of that, they're obviously stuck in that one room to do all that dialogue. They're sort of walking around in circles a lot of the time. I, I just found it, which is very much that doctor. It was very like up and down, very scatty, and then on it. Like, you know, I just, I found, but it was so much jumping around as well between like, these scenes at the airport, like on the way to the airport, the all that, and then that, and I was like, that first episode, that's pretty much all it was. It's yeah, because it's not until episode two, is it, that they are getting the police arrive? No, at the, the end, end of episode the one. doctor coming out and seeing the dolls on the seat. But that is a lot of just very basic padding in the first episode. Well, the whole thing is it's very explaining, isn't it? You don't really see very much. The doctor is explaining for whatever reason he wants to fix the chameleon circuit to change the shape of the TARDIS or to measure a real police box to make sure that he's got the right dimensions something then, like that and then he's he going to go to some, fixed and he wants yeah. maybe he wants options i don't know he wants yeah he wants to get that fixed so that is basically all that is and they're talking about the cloister room and sort of a bit of doom is coming sort of thing it's not great for adric either because he's literally just next to the doctor just repeating lines every now and then to him which isn't great um, and then you've got all of like Tegan and and Aunt Vanessa <laughs> breaking down on the on the roadway and all of that. Um, yeah, it is very much um, Thingy's room, um, Romana's room, which was tiny. It was literally a closet this time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I thought he literally you... showed a closet. Like, what was that? Well, it's gone now. He's jettisoned it now. It's gone. He's like, right. But there's loads of references to like previous stuff and. Yeah, it is a lot of chat. Um, I don't think you really think it... Well, you know, did you have any inclination it was the Master at all? They do mention him. I'm not really until the dolls appeared on the seat. Because you did predict that the Master would be around. Yeah. Now. Uh, there's no other real, like... Like, I didn't think that white... There's a few laughs that I thought, oh, that must be the Master. You know, oh, when okay, all oh, right. I thought you meant literal like comedy moments. No, like no, 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 no. <laughs> actual like him, like ha, 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 sort of dirty laughing or dark laughing. <laughs> dirty <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I didn't think the white watcher guy was like anything to do with the master. I couldn't work out what it was, but that didn't make me think. Oh, that's the master. Or that's something to do with it. He turns up in part one a bit. Isn't that a bit of a mystery? He's there on part like... one, like far away watching, yeah. yeah. Were you like, oh, okay, there's something happening? Or was it I just... actually thought that's where the story was going to go. I thought that they were taking over, you know, what was... Because well, we're on contemporary Earth. We haven't actually been on to contemporary no, Earth. It, she says it's the 80s. About, they talk about the whole night in Shining Arms. She's like, it's the 80s. Like, that but yeah, happen. we haven't had any stories. No, like, since, not like, well, Cam well, Cambridge was the last one, wasn't it? So it's, a, it's, it's always a bit weird seeing, like, the Doctor and the... I mean, Adric in his pyjamas on, like, the, the bypass is yeah, a bit of a yeah. weird thing, isn't it? Adric's hair, actually. Can I just do hair watch? Adric's hair is massive in this story, I wrote. Do you think? I didn't notice bigger. that. And big. It's like this huge... He needs his hair cut, definitely. It's this huge bowl cut now. It's massive. Maybe he um, was just waiting until the end of season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I like the stuff with the real TARDIS and the you've got the real TARDIS there and the other one sort of takes it. Yeah, over, I enjoyed all over. that. And the TARDIS within a TARDIS, that image is good. It's getting darker and darker. It is a lot of techno babble. So it's you just so like so much tech. Like I just found that first story a lot of talk and then jumping back to someone changing the tire. And actually, this story is written by the script editor of this season, and he's brought in all of these 
you know how the season's been with all the more technical stuff and everything. That's that's him. So he's. I think he used to be like a computer programmer or something before he became a strip editor, something like okay. that. So you know, it makes sense. Part two, actually, we go to quite a lot of different places throughout this, which is it does mix it up a bit. Part two carries on the same stuff. I think it's really silly that so the doctor works out that the master. TARDIS is in his TARDIS. He knows that. The silliest idea in this whole story is when the Doctor's like, right, we're going to open the doors under the sea or under the <laughs> river <laughs> and wash everything out. And that, that's, that's not like... more padding. I kind of understood the idea. And then they're not even on there. And I was like, what has this achieved, this whole talk, storyline, to then just be on the barge? Is it just to show that like they don't have full control? Well... I just think it's a really silly idea because you've got all this like stuff, like we've said, like trying to base on real science. And I'm sure like this whole idea of like maths, well, actually, maybe it's not real. No, it can't be maths and like trying to get stuff out of thin air from maths or equations and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure that comes from somewhere. But then to just put that right with, OK, we're just going to open the door. And we know how big the TARDIS is. And what's going to happen to them when they open the doors oh, and yeah, everything the out? Yeah. Like, it's not like the Master's TARDIS is going to just suddenly float out and it's done. I just think it's a really stupid idea. Out of this whole story, that idea just really annoys me. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I just, I was like, oh, OK, this could be interesting. And then, like, nothing came of it. And I was like, oh, right. And, and then, you've, was... then you've got Tegan wandering around the TARDIS. Yeah, that was I mean, quite fun. Okay, well, let's just talk about Tegan though. How do you? How did you find her? Did she's you... very flaily. Oh, I demand to see who's ever in charge of this shit. She literally was like, "Like, have you seen that gif of the Kermit with his arms doing this, like wafting?" That is kind of what I think of as Tegan. I think she did well for considering she was trying to like obviously fix the car and everything goes into the TARDIS finds this thing she sort of accepts it is and then she that, tries I think to some of that I found a bit do. odd I know she wanted to get out and she wanted to get home right but literally she's what is it Log- Logopolis it's because I've got logo in my head and I just want to start with logo and I'm like no it's Logopolis like she finds him and then she steps into Logopo- Log- Logopolis I'd be like what the fuck like do you know, I don't know. I found it all a bit... She's very accepting. She even stays there to, like, get home. Like, I'd be like, I'd be going backwards the way that I came. If someone's like, go back in that TARDIS, I'd be like, yeah, do you know what? I came from there. That's probably easy to get back than following that guy that I met a few minutes ago. Yeah, true. I, she has some quite good lines, though, where she, like, says to the monitor guy, like, about the sweatshop and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I think, like, they're good. I just... But she's so easily comfortable in what is... She's never... Like, all she did was stumble on, and then she's been trying to get off and get back since. I, there was bits like that that I was like, I couldn't work out. To, and then whenever she was, she was just running around, flailing like Kermit. Well, there's a lot of characters in this, all of a sudden, to have bits of story... Um, but you, I thought you might like her because you wanted more of a. I think I like person. her next time. It's always weird when someone's first introduced, and that's the thing as well. Once I heard the name, because I know that she's been back, I was like, "Oh, so this is a new." It's not like just a side thing. Yeah, I think I will grow to enjoy her rather than right in that moment. There were some like strong moments, but. I don't know, it just felt a bit flaily and a bit. The story doesn't really have many moments. Like, the bit where she finds out about her aunt as well, they try and sort of, obviously you need to address that, but because the story needs to move on, which happens in classic Doctor Who all the time, you can't really do very, like, then suddenly she's okay and running around. And, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. It was all that. I don't think this was for anyone other than the Doctor and the Master. I don't think this was a great story. And even actually, if I'm being brutal, it was an odd one for the master. Well, it's this new master. What do you think of him? I liked him with the old master, the first one. Because he's the third, technically, isn't he, this one? Yeah. So with the first master, there'd been moments where you thought he'd changed and was good. And then he'd turn around and do like something deceitful. And you're like, no, the master's never changed. With this one, I never trusted him. 
There was never a moment, even when he's helping, that I actually trusted him. And that was one of the things I loved about the first master was that he he is always who he is. And even those moments where you think, well, he's been good and helped, like, you know, the moments where he was really productively helpful to then it's own, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. This one, he comes up with a plan. That guy vanishes. He's like, actually, I'm just going to go. Like, I don't know. I just found some elements of it. If the Doctor's plan is to take over the universe, um, not the Doctor's, the Master's plan, sorry, was to take over the universe, um, and they have to team up to fix it, I wanted to see him fully fix it until that very last moment where he's like, this was my plan all along, and now it's fixed. I can do, I'm going to do my evil thing. I wanted to see him, like, then work alongside. And I guess maybe it's just because they haven't, other than, like, the last episode, which was... Or the last story where he wasn't even a he wasn't even the master then, was he? There's no real rapport between this actor and this master, this doctor and this master. I don't know. Well, it's this guy that played Tremus, so they worked together. That's, that's, I mean, that's literally the only but it's also a different character he was playing. Maybe it's about that. It's a good cliffhanger though, where the doctor has to shake his hand and he's like, "Fine, we'll work together." That's quite a good moment. Yeah, there's some really good cliff. I like the cl- the first cliffhanger with the dolls. The second one, what was that? That oh gosh, what was that cliffhanger? Oh, the TARDIS shrinking and the doctor. Yeah, that was a good cliffhanger. Uh, and then the third one was mm, the shaking that one. hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a really yeah. good. There's some really nice cliffhangers in this. So yeah, so they all go to Legopolis, which is a different world than all these maths people and everything. There's some really good ideas in this, and there's some lines that I never noticed before. And then about they're the ones that created the CVE stuff, which is what made them fall through into e-space. Yes, all right. So you see this whole... Actually, we had the trilogy, but actually this whole season has been really linked because you've got the e-space lot, then you've got the Keeper of Truck and stuff where we have the Master and Nyssa and all of that stuff, and then we go into this, which sort of carries on that story. Like, it's, it's quite a big arc, which I never really noticed before, and I never picked up that line that the, the people from Legopolis... For whatever reason, there's something about the universe. I was trying to save the universe. I'm not. I can't explain all these things why the universe was fading away. But they created the CVE things that um, that happened. So yeah, I like how it all links up, and it's obviously been thought through this whole time. Um, and it's there if you want to pick up on it. Yeah, the the, the monitor guy's all right. It's not really about him. It is all about the master. And the doctor. Really. It's a hundred percent about them too. The mass, the monitor guy is. I thought he was good actually. There was one that I didn't understand. So he gives the doctor the code, and he goes into the TARDIS to start typing it in, and he goes, "That was a distraction. I want it was you two. I wanted to talk to. Let me show you around." And I was like, "Are you good? Are you bad? Like what?" No, because he, he's pretending. Because the doctor was like, "Make sure." I need to do this alone. He has that word with the monitor oh, before. And he's like, okay. make sure they you look after them. He was just pretending so that they wouldn't go in the TARDIS after the oh, doctor because the doctor asked him to. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's probably, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? But then the, when the master, I don't know if you noticed, that bit there where they're there outside the TARDIS, the master's um, TARDIS, it's, a coll- it's like a bush. Oh, yeah, it's a that massive tree. How's that? This everyone? <laughs> massive bush just lands right in the middle of the crowd and nobody notices at all. Everyone's like, oh, bush now. That's it. Yeah. Like, as if it's, yeah, weird. And then he changes it to a column. Yeah, and it's like right, but it's in front of everybody. And then, so this watcher person is around and the doctor's has a has a word with him and stuff. And, that, and then obviously from then on, the doctor's quite solemn and... Obviously, he knows what's happening and he's not telling anyone else. Um, I like that idea. And then the Watcher brings Nyssa. I can't even see Matilla Oriansis. Oh, because I didn't realise as well that the Doctor gets a message from Nyssa because he says that he puts yeah, it into the Yeah, Yeah, he comes up with that, like, you told us, you, yeah. So she's obviously got in touch saying, my father's gone missing, can you help? And I didn't realise that's how that brings her into it as well. But I don't remember seeing that. Unless, like, I wasn't paying attention, but as I remember that scene where he goes, You told us, but it would have been better if it had been, I don't know, something that we heard instead of that whole cloister scene. If it had been something 
to indicate there's been a message. And I don't know, Adric could have gone, what's that? And he was like, mm, doesn't matter. We'll deal with that, you know, later sort of thing. There is a very brief scene. It's just the Doctor on his own. I don't know where Adric's gone, but he, he goes to Lissy. He's like, oh, there's something. But it's not clear what it is. It's really not clear. So then she's there. She, though, I put like, <laughs> like daughter like mother because it happens again she gets cassiered basically because she's like oh yeah it's it's father you look a bit younger but how are you you know what's going on and believe going that on? it's him <laughs> and Jane, then you've gone missing long time the, no see what's up <laughs> but then the big thing is he gives her a bit of chunky jewelry yeah and At takes least it was better than the last one yeah better than the collar but it's like that is exactly what happened to your mother <laughs> all over again um, I think that's a bit, oh, well, I mean, it's part of the story, isn't it? But I don't think she would be, she can see, well, this is what happens when you have chunky jewellery or you completely like de-age and act like an evil genius. <laughs> you just don't notice. She's like, oh, father, how you, you know? They you they doing? apparently are so nice, they can't even see these things. That's Maybe that's what it is. Everyone on Trakan is like, well, poor Trakan as well, because it gets completely destroyed. I can't see Trakan. Uh, and then that's, again, with Nissa, she's like, that's everything that I know destroyed. And then you, there's just not that time in these stories to have that emotional, because then again, she's off running as well. So oh, it's good to have that story such a waste. The first episode. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, the first episode. Such a waste. But I did like all the stuff with the Goblins and all, everything crumbling and... Oh yeah, but but I think if the first one had moved better, and I guess it's because they wanted the end one to be the dolls on the set. If it had just moved a bit more, you could have had more time for these things. Yeah, because like when you when it starts off and you've got Tegan on her way to a the airport, you're like you have no idea you're going to end up on Legopolis with all these maths people and stuff. <laughs> so I like that it does change though. It could have. At least it's not all in the cloister room. It's not all on story. Earth either. And not all on Earth. Oh, uh, where else have I put? Oh, Nissa's got a nice furry bag. I didn't notice her having a handbag. No, uh, I haven't. Before. I didn't. I missed like, it completely. Because she's because it's all brown in her like uh, dress and stuff. She's got this. It's like a gold strap, and it's like this fur bag, brown ah, fur bag. I, I was thinking look, I enjoyed her um, tutu. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, blend, it's blended in. I, I, was, I don't know if that turns up again, but I have to see. And obviously, well, clothes watch, Tegan's in She's her... travelling, so she's brought a bag with her, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and Tegan's obviously in her air hostess outfit as well throughout this whole thing. And then episode four, there was quite a lot of running around in that one as well, wasn't there? There's a lot of running around. There's a lot of, like, Adric and what people were doing and this are in the TARDIS and then... He does something that takes them out of time and space and then somehow they end up right where the Doctor is. And I well, get it takes the, them to her. But again, it's not about them. This whole story is not about them. So any of their scenes all just felt a bit awkward and weird because the story is about the Doctor and the Master. Mm -hmm. What always confused me when I was younger watching this was that you've got the telescope, this Pharos project, and I never got that the people of Logopolis had copied what was on Earth. Yeah. And I, because I was like, why is all that Earth stuff on this? Why are they sitting there on an office chair on Logopolis? And then why are they going to Earth and it's there again? It took, it took me a long time I know, to work I got that, that out. I, well, I couldn't understand why they copied it. Well, they apparently they were holding the whole universe together with all their maths. I got that. No, I don't know. They were There was some kind of... It's never no, explained. No, I didn't, I didn't get why. on a big project. Because actually, real life. Because there is a real life telescope like that, isn't there? Like that's trying to do. I think it's on the sky at night and stuff. Yeah, there's, it's like a real place. They filmed it at a real one, so it does that, um, and it's trying to get alien signals and stuff or search out. I don't know. Yeah, something, something to do with their technology. Or I just, something. I just didn't understand why. I mean, I know they're working on the project, but why did it have to be a complete replica? Yeah, I don't know because I. And there's a lot of things that that guy says in due time, in due time, as, as if it's going to be explained, and it never gets explained. <laughs> the monitor, yeah. Well, then he dies. So. And then he dies anyway. But for me, it was a really good scene of the master, not so much the doctor, and I just didn't feel that there was the chemistry and things there with these two. Um, But, you know, it was a good scene when they're in the 
in, I guess, his TARDIS or whatever. No, he wasn't in TARDIS. What was he in? He was in that space and he tells him, like, actually, this was my... I gave you a false thing. I know, yeah, I liked all that. And then we see the Doctor go to do something to sacrifice. And So the Master is... Oh, God, I should know what he's doing. But anyway, he's broadcasting this whole universe. I'm taking yeah. over, blah, 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 blah. Something to do with this CBE or whatever. Basically... This cable needs to be unplugged. If the cable's unplugged, then the whole of the master's plan for the universe is is completely done. One cable, that's all it is. So that's what the doctor needs to unplug. It's and it's like cable. at the end of something. So he climbs across slowly, unplugs it. As the last story for this doctor, do you think it's a it's a good story as a last story? Because they what have we had before? I mean, we've had I mean, the, it didn't feel an honour to him as the Doctor. I liked the scenes where you had everyone going, Doctor, Doctor, all that sort of stuff. That was really nice. This felt more like setting up the future escapades of the next Doctor. I don't know what's coming, but I feel like it was more setting up this Master and the next Doctor. They're, caught, they're kind of equals. Do you know what I mean? They're both outcasts, and that was always... They were so similar and yet so different. And this Doctor sort of had him as like... He's this really evil power. He's really bad and evil. But there was no, like, camaraderie. And that's kind of what made their relationship as Doctor and Master because they're so similar and yet they are so different. And it just made him feel like a complete other person, another villain, and he's not. That's what makes the Master such an interesting baddie. Because the Doctor's not even, like, looking at him. When no. The, when he shakes his like, There's won't. nothing. There's he's no, like, sense of knowing and I think that's because they've just not spent time together but this didn't feel like for that reason this didn't feel like a wonderful I liked his speech at the end a lot of elements I liked but this didn't feel like his going if we go back to the third doctor right and his last story it was everything he loved it was like action-packed all this do you know like it was completely this didn't feel like it it felt like a transition it felt like we've mentioned some things of his past and history, but we are, you know, we've already regenerated one huge villain and we're going to be moving on forward. Yeah, because it does a lot. It's not like a big heroic storyline. It's not a heroic moment for him to regenerate. All he, he does go the is climb very slowly across the ring and plug it and then fall. That's all, to, that's all he does. I want, if you're going to have that, I want some sort of like epic battle, some epic like. Not just the kids watching him fall all at different ways. Their eyes don't even all go together. It, I don't know. It just all felt a bit... <sighs> yeah. And and it's trying to introduce, like, Tegan and, and everything in that as well. And so Adra doesn't get much to do. And there's not that report. And, and I think because it's Tom Baker's last story, he's probably in a bit of a mood again. So he, I think his mood comes across. I don't know, and that shows his best acting was as he was regenerating. The regeneration was weird as well. Well, then, then, then it explains that this watcher. I don't know what what that means. Where Nissa's like, he was the doctor all the time. I yeah, I didn't means. get that. I was like, no. is he an end space doctor? I'm really confused by that. that I, don't, I think that's like a, it's, I think it's like an echo, a future echo, sort of like a ghost of the future that's waiting to take his place. If you see what I mean, I think that's what it is. I think. She's from N- from E Space, isn't she? Nissa's not. Oh no, she's not. We were back by then. Yeah, sorry. At a moment. No, then I yeah, I, I didn't I get it in terms of like it was fun, but I don't know, it didn't fly for me. I want if if we're gonna have a regeneration, I want him to lie there. And I wanted him to lie there and start pulsing or something. And then they're like, Doctor, what's happening? And then he does his speech. Yeah, but just to sort of lie there and then this thing walks in and he's just like, he doesn't really say much, does he? Just sort of, yeah. Like, it was all right. I think a lot of it was padded and then rushed. And this just felt transitional, this episode for me. Not, and maybe if I watched it by itself, I might feel different. But like I said, we do these in order and that's how that felt to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I do enjoy this one. I do like this one, but I agree with your points. Whereas, yeah, there is a lot of that padding and there's a lot of um, 
yeah, it is setting up a lot of other things as well. And uh, yeah, and considering sort of... how long he's been in, I think I would have just expected it's just something more. a bit more epic. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I think his I... last story. It should be his last story, not just. And we move on to because it was just preparing for what's coming next. There was There's that... a lot of other things like those first episodes. There was a lot of it. it started to get on my nerves a bit. Where so Doctor and Adric talking. Cut back to Tegan and her own. Yeah, cut that's back. all it was. And it was like it wasn't like one. It wasn't like a whole couple of scenes where they have a discussion and some drama happens. It was a couple of sentences, a couple of sentences, back and forth. And it was like I just want a bit more conversation. Why cut back and forth all the time? Yeah, that's all that's it was. What, that first yeah. episode. That's all it was. It was just like cutting back, and then eventually we see some dolls on a seat, and we're like, oh yeah, the master's here. Like that was pretty much all it was. <laughs> I think this, uh, yeah, okay. Wow, okay, well, <laughs> and there we go. Not, there, not a great. I am um, excited for a new doctor because I felt that that was coming. Well, I know I, you sort of maybe thought. Yeah, I felt it happen. this season. I was like, he's got to be going soon. I think I said that at the start of the season, didn't I? Like, it, whether this is his last or he's going soon, I don't know. But like, it's got. You can just tell. Yeah, yeah. Did he want to go? Well, I mean, this is a new producer. There's a lot of like a lot of new people coming in for this season, and the story goes like every season, Tom Baker would have been was like, oh, I don't think I should do it anymore, and everyone would be like, oh no, Tom, you got to carry on, you got to carry on, sort of thing. And then when they had the meeting for this season, the new producer who was in was and he and Tom was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. And the new producer was like, yeah, okay, we agree. And I don't think he was expecting them to agree, but I think it was it was time. I don't think it could have carried on like it had carried on within Mo. So I mean, I don't. He wasn't like forced out, but I he could have easily just carried on and on and on. It would have just got worse and like more moody and exactly. Yeah, you know. yeah. It just felt like so the time. It probably was. It's the just best a time. shame that this story wasn't an honor to that. Other than those scenes where he reflects back and you see, that was it. That And oh, that was nice. Companions, you got the companions, you've got the ends with the Black Guardian as well there. And I, I enjoyed the, that. Yeah. Um, I wish they could have made more of that. But there we are. That's yeah. it for me. Well. <laughs> yeah. Another Doctor. I can't believe we're finally on to, like, what, Fifth Doctor? Fifth Doctor now. Oh, God. Doctor. Peter Davison. Did you know he was next? No, no, I didn't. So I knew I knew I knew he was a doctor. I didn't know when he was coming up. I knew it'd be in the eighties, put it that way, because he wasn't in the noughties. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got the eighties, yeah. Yeah. So Legopolis was the last story of the season. We do have one more before we oh. end our season. So in, there was a big gap in between that season and the fifth doctor season starting. So in between, not long after Legopolis, was a Christmas spin-off special. Oh. Which we have to include. Okay. It's in, the, it's, on the, it's in the season 18 box set. So we've got one more to do. Okay. I wonder where I'll find that. Is it on Britbox? I, I think it's in the specials on Britbox. I'll double check. It's called Canine and Company, A Girl's Best Friend. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> K9 spin off. It's just a one off Christmas special. We have to do it. Fine. <laughs> okay, we will do that. And I think you'll like it. It's, it's like a Christmassy murdery mystery thing. But it's okay. K9. With K9. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> then it's the end of the season. That's a little palate cleanser from all of this uh, tech yeah, stuff. Yeah, uh, uh. From Legopolis and everything before we go into the next season. So. Um, that is a good one. Everyone loves K9 and Company. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pilot that never went to series. Okay. But... <laughs> oh, God, okay. They had to do something with that dog. They spent a lot of money on it. Well, yeah. It's still, yeah it's still around. Well, this will be, yeah, this is another K9 number three. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, cool. Right. So we'll do that. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised. That, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how you, how you would find this story or not, but it's more just it's the regeneration one, I think, Yeah. than anything else. Yeah, that's what so, it felt. Well, okay, we'll see you all next week then for Canine and Company. <laughs> In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at 2 Watch Who. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Two. What?
Beach Hill.